Hello and welcome. In today's video, we would like to present the latest conversion type available in VCAT using the APS viewer. The new unified format is available for all major file formats, specifically IFC, Revit, Navisworks, and DWG. The unified format standardizes the data structure between these formats, streamlining report creation and allowing for interesting interoperability. Now I would like to walk you through uh, the new conversion data and what the new templates look like. Of course, with new conversion comes new templates. And you can see here in my project, I've uploaded uh, several different files from these different supported file formats and they've all been converted into the unified format. The procedure remains the same. So if I wanted to download a template for the DWG file, for example, I'd open up the template section and here I'll be presented with the main unified template, which I can download and start using. To speed things up, uh, I've actually prepared a couple of these templates, which I've already downloaded. So you can see here in my folder, I have my four different templates. And let's start by having a look with uh, this DWG file. So normally, uh, in, in, pre in previous conversion types, what we had is every file format had slightly different data sets. Um, so for example, in a DWG file, I would have things like layers and, and handles uh, explicitly, explicitly highlighted in the data set. What we've done here instead is try to normalize the data structures so that they all look the same regardless of the original file format that we're using. So you can see the actual report uh, layout hasn't changed uh, much, if at all. I have my summary, I have the model info, asset details, markers, and so on. Uh, and if I actually go and have a look at a specific uh, dashboard page, it looks like it used to. I still have the same sort of interactions available. Um, I can select uh, object types. Uh, filter out the data based on that and make all my, my usual interactions remain available. Where do things change is in the actual data sets. So if we have a look at that, you can see that here I no longer have, for example, a data set relating to layers. What I have is the VCAT asset table and the VCAT properties table. If I have a look at the VCAT asset table here, as usual, I have a list of all my geometries and, and elements that are part of my drawing. Um, but the only identification information we have is, uh, well, we can see the source file, which of course is the name of the file I started out with. I have a name for each object and then an object type and an icon. An icon is more of an internal reference to the type of geometry that is involved. And then of course, uh, source file type is fairly straightforward and then object ID and parent ID, which we were already used for. The rest of the information will be moved to the VCAT properties table. So as always, if I wanted to see all the properties for a certain object, let's pick one at random, uh, 180. I can see here I have the properties grouped into different sections. Each property has a name and then a value. Uh, and then of course I have some, some uh, unit of measurement and type information as well. But you can see something like the layer would now be found in the properties table rather than directly in the assets table. We'll see in a moment how we can actually get access to that information. But first, let's move along to the next uh, report. Uh, I don't want to save this. Let's have a look at the IFC model. So uh, again, an IFC file, which I have imported as a unified format. And so the, the, the template will look exactly like the one for the DWG that we just saw. So we're going to download all the data connected to this model. And here I have the same summary uh, sort of structure with the number of objects and properties available. And if we go and check out the tables, I no longer have specific tables for everything like uh, the site, the building, the floor, all that IFC specific um, language has been normalized. And here again, I have source file, name, object type, icon, and the object IDs. All that other information would be in the properties. Now, of course, we still have access to all that information. If I want to see the elements GUIDs, or if I'm interested in um, stuff like the floors, the building, all that kind of stuff is still, of course, available. 
um, all we need to do is some data transformation within Power BI, which makes it very, very simple to access. Now let's move along. And as uh, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed, this resembles actually a lot uh, what the Navisworks template used to be. Uh, in fact, that is what where the unified uh, format started out from. And so we can see the, the unified template for Navisworks will be very, very close to what it used to be uh, in, the, in the old Navisworks conversion. So again, here, downloading all the data for my specific model. And if we have a look at that, uh, we can see same data sets as we had in the other formats. Uh, here, actually, because the Navisworks model is composed of multiple submodels, we can see the information of the submodels that compose our Navisworks. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is an MEP uh, coordination Navisworks model in which I have three different Revit files for plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. But from a data structure point of view, it's exactly the same as what we were looking at before, which really helps us uh, streamline the report creation. So no longer do I need to uh, worry about learning different structures for different file formats. Uh, the data is always structured in the same way. The VCAT data is always structured in a uniform way. Uh, which is going to make working with these different models very, very simple. Let's have a look at also the Revit file real quick. And I'm going to show you um, that, of course, we still have the same properties, but how we can sort of manipulate the data to pull out some of that information, some of that useful information. Uh, so a, a very common example that we've seen uh, with, with some of our clients and the reports that they're building is that they need to uh, segregate information based on the different uh, Revit uh, categories. So at, at first glance, this might look like an issue. So we used to have in the assets, we used to have the category, family, and symbol. Now I no longer have this information. How can I access it? Well, as you would access any other property uh, that we can see down here. So all that information, the categories we can see are still included in here in the data set. So all we need to do is some data manipulation to pull it out. Let's have a look at how it actually do that. So I'm going to open up Power Query, move it over from the next page. Okay. And now let's say I, I wanted to have, uh, let's, let's just do the category because the, the procedure then is the same for any type of, of data set. So if I wanted to have the category information, what I would do is I would create a reference to my VCAT properties table and maybe rename it category. Okay, and so now that I have this, what I want to do is I want to filter down. Let's actually, let's make it a little more elaborate. Uh, let's rename this and let's do category dash family. So let's do both category and family. Okay, so how do I get this information out of the properties? Uh, well, I, all I need to do is come over to the name and I'm going to filter out this property. Let's load a little more data. I'm going to deselect everything. And then all I want to do is scroll down to uh, where it says category and then further down to the family. Okay. So now I've filtered out these and you can see for each object, I actually have two, uh, two rows, each object that, that of course has this sort of information. Uh, we have two different rows for the category and the family. Okay, uh, this doesn't actually look like what the data used to look like. So what, what I want is, what I would like is a single row with multiple columns. That's very simple to do. All I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object name and value columns. I'm going to right click and I'm going to remove the other columns. That way we have a little more of a cleaner situation. Then select the name column and I'm going to go over to transform and to pivot column. Okay, great. So here, what I want to do is I want to set the value column, which of course is going to be value. And then in the advanced options, I'm going to tell it to not aggregate the data. Press OK. Okay, this looks more like what I was looking for. So a single row for each object with the category and the family. Of course, you can see some, some elements don't actually have the family attribute. Some might not have the category or family attributes. That's perfectly normal. 
okay, fine, we have the data, but you said we could have it how we used to have it in the old reports. Well, we can do that as well. Uh, all we need to do is come over to the VCAT asset dataset. Uh, and I'm going to switch back to the home tab and then merge queries. And we're going to add in my category dash family. Selecting, of course, the object IDs as the key. Press OK. And here we have, we've added the table. So now all we need to do is expand this column. Uh, I'm going to exclude the object ID and I'm going to remove the prefix. Go ahead and OK. And there we have it. For the objects that have this sort of attribute, we have category and family available over here. And this looks exactly like what uh, the data used to look like in the old templates. OK, so uh, and this took just a couple seconds. Now let's go ahead and let's actually close this out. And I'm going to show you another benefit of this sort of uh, transformation type. So I'm just going to close this without applying and I'm going to revert. Uh, I'm sorry, discard the changes. Yes, that's fine. OK, and so now uh, let's say we want to have a look at the asset details, just for example. Um, so here we're looking at uh, a Revit model. Uh, and actually, let me show you if we head on back to the uh, VCAT file manager, you can see here I have my, my model loaded in. Uh, if we head on over to the file manager, uh, this was the architectural model Revit. Um, one use case that has come up in the past is uh, people creating reports with uh, one file format. And then for a variety of, of possible reasons, uh, changing requirements, uh, better performance, uh, they've had to switch uh, formats. And so in the past, it was a little complicated because they had to go and remap all the transformations. Now we actually have the same data set. So I have a, an architectural Revit, and I also have an architectural Navisworks, where I, all I did was open up Navisworks and append this Revit over here. What I can do is I can seamlessly switch between the two uh, in my report. And one thing I'll point out is if we check out the Revit model, the model size is 94 megabytes, whereas the Navisworks, exactly same model, it's only 10 megabyte. So you can see how this scales and how this can be uh, very beneficial. So if I wanted to change the model, all I would do is check out the uh, template panel, and I'm going to copy the slot ID and also make a note of the view name. So let's close this out and let's return to my report. So here, what I need to do is I need to replace the slot ID and the view that are being used. So again, let's go over to Power Query. And in our new templates, thanks to a new advancement we, we did a while back, uh, all the data is loaded based on a few attributes and parameters that we have here. In particular, what we're interested in is the VCAT GeoID file which would be the slot ID we just copied. So let me just replace that real quick. There we go. And then we have the VCAD viewable name. So this would be the view uh, name. So instead of a new construction, which was the Revit view, we're just going to do architectural uh, dot and WD. Uh, most cases, most models won't, uh, sorry, most model file types won't have uh, multiple views, some do, so this allows us uh, to be flexible and manage all cases. So if I go ahead and I apply this, what's happening here is VCAT is now downloading the data for this new slot that I've told it to download. And because the actual data structures are the same, all the previous uh, transformations we did are still applicable and functional with this new data set. So now if I uh, close and apply, uh, and I head back to my actual report. Uh, we can see, let's say I want to check out the asset caller. So we can see what we're loading up here is actually the Navisworks data with the Navisworks model. Um, but it's completely seamless because all the transformations are the same. Uh, and you can probably notice uh, an improved performance in the actual model load. This is a, a fairly complex model. Uh, but the Navisworks version runs uh, definitely better. Uh, and again, all transformations, all functionality is exactly the same cost, 
the board. Okay, so this has been a quick look at uh, the new unified conversion type that we've recently re released. In the future, uh, we're going to be going into some uh, other use cases that have now been unlocked, things like uh, mixed runtime federations, which are very, very powerful, but we'll have a look at those in the future. For now, thank you for joining us in this video and stay tuned for those upcoming videos in the future.